I mean, I'd say I was working class, but then I went to university. I mean, we all did. So does that necessarily make me middle class? I mean, I still read the Daily Mirror. Why not? It's a damn good paper. But then I also get The Guardian. So what's that saying? It's just that whole pigeonholing thing that I object to. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Steve. What? So, at the end of chapter two, Henry is beginning to question his own motives in pursuing the case and, at the same time, wondering whether Sarah is telling him the whole story about the divorce. Yeah, I'm just going to stop you there, Anthony. Sure. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, we've just reached the end of chapter two and I can't, for the life of me, tell you what the hell's going on. I mean, you know, Henry, Sarah, these are just words, really. <laughs> right. I mean, it's great. It's all great, Anthony, obviously, but I just wonder... I mean, just as an example, I mean, not this, I mean, not this at all, don't do this. But what if, say, the main character dies at the end of chapter one? If I mean, not that, but I mean, something like that. I mean, not like that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, what if, I mean, not this, ignore this. What if Henry, although obviously not, if he had sex, I mean, not sex, but sex right at the beginning with Sarah? I mean, not Sarah, but you know? Henry has sex. No. Forget the sex. I'm just throwing things out there. I mean, you're the author, Anthony. You've got the talent. You know what you're doing. I'm just here to help. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, so what if it's not that, but it's Jaws? <laughs> oh, isn't there already a book called Jaws? Not Jaws the Shark, but, yeah, maybe a big shark. And I mean, not that, but Sarah <laughs> falls in love with a shark. So Sarah falls I mean, just in love... that kind of thing. I mean, uh, maybe it's not a shark, but it's a squid or a pebble or a policeman. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, not them. None of them. Yeah? So... Uh, I am making sense, right? I mean, <laughs> not sense, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, at the start... Well, not the start, but, yeah. Uh, Henry either dies or has sex. Yeah, neither. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving not Sarah. Oh, no, God, no, not Sarah. Unless it's Sarah. <laughs> to to uh, fall in love with... Uh, or, or not in love... Ooh! ..with a shark, a squid, a pebble, a policeman, or none or all of the above. That's it! That is it! Write that! Absolutely write that! Or... don't. <laughs> OK, guys, uh, th this sort of scene can be a bit embarrassing, so just, just try and be as relaxed as possible. Mm. OK, yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's turn over. Sound speed. Scene 28, take one. Marker. And action. Oh, now we know. Now we know. Now we know. Um, uh, cut! <laughs> uh, John. Yeah? Uh, you, John, you, you were talking. Was I? Yeah, you, you said, now we know. Now we know? Yeah. Did I? Yeah, you did a bit. Oh, my God, how weird. Sorry. Not to worry. Let, let's go again, straight away. OK. Turn over, please. Sound speed. And action. Oh, now we know. Now we know. Yeah, now we know. No. Cut! <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I, I know what that was. I was in her light, wasn't I? Uh, uh, a bit... No, more it's... Sort of the same thing again, really. What? The saying, now we know. <laughs> What, again? Did I, carry? Yeah, you do. You keep saying, now we know. God, that is so... I had no idea. Why would I do that? We don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I'll cut that right out. OK, well, uh, let's try again, and, and this time, keep an eye on the... Now we know, yeah. Hello? <clears throat> Marker. Action. Oh, now we know! 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 Cut! You're both doing it now. Oh, you're kidding. Are you doing it now? Apparently. Right, look, let, let's go again, uh, but this time we, we won't take sound. We'll, we'll get the pictures, I can talk you through it, and we can put the sound on afterwards. OK. OK. Mute board, please. Turn over. 
and action. That's great, John. Yeah, lo lots of passion. Yeah, that, that's, that's good, Carrie. Mind the shadow there. Maybe roll around a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> now we know. Oh, yeah, we know now. <laughs> now we know. And he walked by on the other side, leaving the man helpless. But then, who should wander by but a Samaritan of all people? And he actually helped the man. Hang on, Master. No, he did. He went over and actually... No, sorry. No, no, no. I, I mean, this is what I'm saying. That a Samaritan, all right, so have a good think about your attitudes, went and helped. Yeah, no, I see. No, no, no stick with it. Because what I'm saying is that he was a good Samaritan. That's good Samaritan, if you could imagine such a thing. Yes! Yes, I can. I, I think we all can. Yeah. I, I know there's a lot of prejudice against Samaritans, which is terrible, but I'm sure I speak for everyone in this room when I say that there are loads of really nice Samaritans. Yeah, some of my best friends are Samaritans. <laughs> yeah, me and the wife went on holiday to Samaria last year and they were lovely people. Yeah, couldn't do enough for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, so what I'm finding offensive, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, mm. is your unreflecting acceptance of this cliché that all Samaritans are wankers. No, I'm saying he was good. Yeah, but you're implying that the fact that he was good is worth a story in itself. It's some kind of weird curiosity, like an albino Nubian. No, I'm saying that goodness comes in unexpected places. Yeah, and I'm saying that the fact that you wouldn't expect goodness from a Samaritan betrays your inherent racism. <laughs> OK, OK, all right, that's a big word. Let's just take a deep breath here. I, I didn't mean to offend anybody. That's the last thing I intended. Um, I didn't realise there were any Samaritans in the room. No, that's not the point. Or Samaritan sympathisers, you know, Sammy lovers. Oh, oh, I can't believe I'm hearing this. No, 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 no. I, I didn't realise it was such a PC environment here, and I suppose I thought that having what was only intended as a fond pop at our Samaritan <laughs> neighbours, friends even, if you like, would not be inappropriate in the context of a story which is, after all, about goodness. And at the end of the day, it is only a parable. What, it didn't really happen? Well, of course not. A Samaritan tosser wouldn't do that for his own grandmother. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus. What? <laughs> <clears throat> so, Steve, do you follow the football? Painted lady romped home in the third. Yes! <laughs> oh, and that's a bad miss. <laughs> oh, yes, he thought that was in. That is a shame. Look at the way Jimmy Logan's shoulders are <laughs> sagging as he retreats from the table. Uh, uh, another blow to the people's favourite in what has been, as we all know, a very difficult eight or nine years for Jimmy. <laughs> well, he's certainly been struggling for form. He's been struggling for money, is what he's been struggling for, Peter. And he's not earning any sitting there watching a much younger man clear up. Yes, <laughs> young Terry Stevens there, potting away like the whole world's made of pocket. While Jimmy there is out of pocket in more ways than one. <laughs> Yes, that was a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, you look wiped out. You OK? Um, yeah, you know. Tough down the ward. Yeah, yeah. A couple of new admissions. Little lad with a pronounced heart murmur. Poor little kid. I think he's going to pull through, but Sari is back on the ventilator, which meant I had to liaise with the consultants at King's. Mm, those guys. Exactly. Yeah, it's hitting bed crisis time, and I just don't know where I can physically fit any more severely ill children on my ward. Still, listen, sorry to unload on you. How was your day at the ice cream factory? <laughs> oh, you know, fine. Come on, it, it's OK, you can say. Well... 
guess it was a bit of a hard day at the ice cream factory. All right. Poor you. I mean, compared to your day, it was nothing, but... It's fine. Listen, we've been through this. Just cos I'm a paediatrician dealing with severely ill children doesn't mean that you can't have a tough day tasting ice cream at the ice cream factory. <laughs> I'm just really trying to push the rum and raisin thing, you know? Trying to ride that whole kitsch revival that bombed with Raspberry Ripple. You remember that whole shitstorm? We've got a similar situation, which is I'm having to spend a lot more time than usual on the ward for children who, sadly, we know just aren't going to get better. And, and it's hard, cos, you know, you look into their parents' eyes and you <laughs> really just don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah, that is quite similar, isn't it? <laughs> You know, sometimes, Keith, I, I feel that ice cream tasting isn't somehow as important as looking after sick and dying children. Oh, oh, of course it is. Look, I work hard saving children's lives, but you work just as hard ensuring that they've got some lovely ice cream to enjoy when they do get better. Yeah, you know, that sounds good. Right, I'm going to go up and do some coursework for my human rights law degree. What about you? Oh, I think I'll just stay down here, wanking. <laughs> so, obviously it isn't finished, but was this the kind of thing you had in mind? Uh, yeah. I tell you what it is, Leonardo, it's definitely along the right lines, but can I just throw something in? I mean, just as an example. So, I mean, not this. But if it, well, if it kind of came, like, I mean, not this, not this, I mean, obviously, not this, but if it did a kind of, you know, I mean, I mean, not, not this, not this at all, I mean, you're the artist, so you'd probably do this much better than me, but if it, if it was more kind of, well, that kind of, yeah, so something like that, I mean, not that, but that. <laughs> OK, back um, in five. I'm so sorry it didn't work out for you two. And uh, I just wanted to say, I know I was Lucy's friend first, but I really feel for you both. If there's anything I can do. No, it's, it's, it's all right. I'm, I mean, at least it's amicable. You know, we're, we're still talking. Right, yeah. Is that a good idea, do you think? Uh, no, right, yeah. I mean, I mean, what would you advise? For what it's worse, take a box of her belongings that you still got, round to where she's living now. Um, and burn them in the front garden while doing a sort of dance. Yeah. And then you should probably um, write the word bitch in weed killer on her lawn. <laughs> and then what you should do is go around to where she works and plant some crack in her desk and then call the police. Um, what are we talking about? Mm. Oh, j just the, the Lucy situation. Oh, shall I leave you to it? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine, mate. Olivia was just giving a bit of advice. <laughs> Have we planted the crack yet? No, I was just saying... Oh, mate, you've got to do that. I mean, when my last relationship ended, I felt so much better when I got to the point where I felt comfortable planting the crack. Mm. Little trick I picked up. Every time you think of her, have a quick whiskey. OK. Um, hi, everyone. Are we talking about Lucy? Yeah. Here, got you a whiskey. Oh. <laughs> That's the way. <clears throat> what stage are we at? Oh, I haven't even planted the crack yet. Oh, you can't rush these things. Does she have a pet? Uh, yeah, yeah. You should kill it. In a weird way. Leave it for her. Make sure she knows you did it. Otherwise, how's she going to know it's over? Well, I'm just not sure that it is over. Mm. Well, it will be then. <laughs> Hello and congratulations! Your telephone number has been specially selected in our Wednesday draw. <laughs> you have definitely won a major prize. Perhaps even our star prize of a massive yacht. <laughs> yes, that's right. As soon as the admin fees have been processed, we will rush you a... Hello? Hello? It's happened again. He hung up? Yes, and I was in the middle of a sentence. Why will no one accept my massive yachts? It's the same with me. It's almost as if the public has lost its taste for massive yachts. But what else are we to do? I mean, here we are, three eccentric billionaire brothers. Indeed, we've all made far more money than we could possibly need. And we have all these massive yachts. And who better to give them to than the deserving owners of specially pre-selected telephone numbers? And yet it never seems to work out like that. No, they just hang up 
It's the height of rudeness. Could it be something about our voices? <laughs> Aren't we? Our voices are warm and reassuring. Don't tell me we spent all that time during our childhood going to elocution lessons every Tuesday for nothing. <laughs> hmm, could it be the admin fees that are putting them off? But that's ridiculous. The admin fees are only a few hundred quid, whereas the massive yachts are worth thousands. I know, I know. I mean, someone's got to pay the admin fees. There's a lot of admin accumulates around the giving away of a massive yacht. Not to mention postage and packing. Well, then, it's a mystery. <laughs> Yes? 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 <laughs> Brothers, all aboard one of our remaining massive yachts. We may already have won a timeshare in Florida. <laughs> Hello, what's this? Jump off a cliff, two pounds. That's it, yeah. Sounds exciting. Oh, yeah, can't beat it. Jump off a cliff, wind through your hair, beautiful panorama of the sea, waves crashing on the rocks beneath you, little boats in the harbour to the east and to the west, the Atlantic, with waves as high as hills and the briny scent of trade. Possibility, other lands. Two quid. What a bargain. Right, so what do I do? Well, take a good run-up so you can push yourself good and far off the edge and then just... See how the mood takes you. Great. I mean, I am a bit nervous of heights. Does that matter? Well, I'll be honest with you, it's not ideal. Depends how bad you got it, cos if it's just a few butterflies, I'll say go for it. Cos the good thing is that while there is a bit of a height thing to start with, that does get better quite quickly. Right. <laughs> but it's all fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all fine. Yeah, jump off a cliff. It's absolutely fine. I won't get hurt. Really? Oh, that's good. <laughs> what? No, it's, it's just some people get a bit bruised, I imagine. I mean, I don't know. I, I prefer not to look. Right, so, um, how do I find my way back up if I want to do it again? Uh, people usually find that once is enough, actually. I mean, it is fun, but you only need the one. Like a hot chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, that's uh, one to jump off a cliff, then, please. And that'll be two quid. You're actually doing it? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Try to stop him. <laughs> Welcome to Big Talk. My name's Raymond Terrific, and yet again I stand at the eye of the storm of the world's ills, waving my staff like Gandalf and screaming, let's get this sorted. As ever, I'm joined by a panel of brain spurts and mentalissimos, a veritable smorgasbord of cleverness that the world is rightly too respectful to eat. First up, it's a biggie, but I refuse to be scared. Is there a god? Leonard? Well, this is an age-old question. Answer can't be as long as the question, Leonard. Do not show you're working. <laughs> Well, of course, it, it's Yes a or no? Of, uh, yes. Great, he shoots, he scores. Right, moving on. Uh, yes, what are we going to do about... Hang on, there isn't a god. But he said there was. Yes, but that was just... Leonard, uh, did you or did you not just say there was a god? I did. So has Danielle got new information or were you playing me like a balalaika? Uh, no, it, it's Come just... Come on, a... boffins, I've already wasted time saying balalaika when drum would do. <laughs> Let's get this sorted. I think the, the problem we're having here is that Leonard thinks there is a god and I think there isn't. Oh, you are having a go! <laughs> no, it's just that we respectfully disagree. That is bad news! Can we sort it, Richard? Get into this casting vote. Well, I, I'm agnostic and says so Tim. Yes. Oh, make the tea! <laughs> Guys, buffins, we need to know if there's a god. It's important. Well, there is no yes or no answer. Um... What?! I can think of two yes or no answers just off the top of my head! <laughs> Mr. Judd. Yes, Doctor. Well, your operation's this afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to go through the procedure with you. Oh, uh, yes. We're going to be using a new kind of experimental keyhole surgery called hammers. Hammers? It's called hammers, and it's a new approach to keyhole surgery. Right. What does it involve? What does it involve? Uh, well, the, the clue's in the name, really. You know, <laughs> hammers. What, very, very small hammers? Yeah. Well, not, not that small. Right. 
Will it hurt? Oh, no. You'll be under general anesthetic. You won't feel a thing. Right. Of course, it'll hurt like hell when you wake up. A bunch of guys pounding at you with hammers as hard as they can. Blind me. And, and that'll solve the problem, will it? Well, we think it's worth a try. Because while hammers can put pressure on your system, of course, your appendicitis is smaller, so it'll be putting pressure on that too, and it'll hurt it more. Well, that makes sense. Mm. And if it doesn't work, we've got a pioneering new therapy called frying pans. So we'll give that a whirl. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Number Wang, the numbers show that simply everyone is talking about yes. Let's welcome our two contestants. It's Julie from Anglesey and Simon, who is from Anglesey. So, Julie, do any singing up there in Anglesey? Yes. Simon? No, 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 I don't sing in Anglesey. Why would I sing? For can't you see? I cannot sing. Oh, what a shame. Right, bit of a change this week on Number Wang, because instead of starting with round one, we're going to start with round one. So, let's play Number Wang. Julie, you go first. Seven. Simon? Two. Forty-six. Eight. One and a half. Nope, none of those are number wang. Fifty? No. Nine? N naught? No. A million? No. Infinity? No. Infinity and a half? You can't have infinity and a half. Oh, uh, five. <laughs> Simon? Uh, Six point two seven eight five. No. Uh, one and a half. You've already said that. Um, vase. That's not a number, Julie. I can't think of any more numbers. Well, what a situation we have here. Unprecedented in the history of number wang. That alarm means it's been three whole days without anyone getting number wang, which means we have a sudden death tie break. <laughs> Julie, Simon, please step into the pods of sudden death. <laughs> the rules are simple. The one of you to die first wins. OK, Julie, Simon, are you both ready? Then let's release the number gas. You may be interested to know that today's number gas is made from the number two, which you may remember from school is deadly to humans. <laughs> Number one. Well done, Julie. Simon, desperately trying to inhale the deadly number gas there, but it's too little, too late. Simon, you've lost. Join us next time for more number one. But until then, good number one. Oh well, well, that's brilliant. Thank you. Great news, guys. The bank have agreed the loan. Oh, Yay! that's great. So now we can go ahead and start up our own dry cleaning business. Great. No more working for other dry cleaners. Finally, we can really go it alone. So, the last thing to decide is, what should we call it? Well, I think it should definitely be a funny name. Yeah, a, a funny name, like a hairdresser's that's called Fringe Benefits or a cut above. <laughs> so what would one for a dry cleaning shop be? Well, I've had a thought, actually. I mean, I think it's funny. It's certainly a phrase I've heard, but I'm just not quite sure what it means. It's touching cloth. <laughs> oh, great. Touching cloth. Yeah, that, that's certainly a phrase I've heard. It's got a ring to it, hasn't it? Touching cloth. So, so what does it mean? Well, obviously, part of what it means is what we would be doing. You know, as dry cleaners, we'll spend most of our day touching cloth. Yeah, yes, and of course, our customers who bring in their clothes for us to dry clean, they'll all be touching cloth as well. <laughs> you know, as they hand the clothes over, they'll be touching cloth. Well, great, that all works out brilliantly. And what's more, what I think will make it funny is that I think that touching cloth has a double meaning. It's just, I'm not quite sure what it is. Right, well, well, that's great, but I think it's probably quite important that we find out exactly what the other meaning of touching cloth might be before we call the sign writer or get the notepaper printed. Yeah, does anybody know what the other meaning of touching cloth is? I know. <laughs> oh, great. Is it funny? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is funny. What is it? Well, when you're touching cloth, what you're doing is that you so need a poo <laughs> that you've sort of started to poo yourself but you've managed to stop at the point 
where a bit of the poo is actually touching the cloth of the inside of your pants. Oh, right. I had no idea there was a name for that. That is funny. And it's funny because it involves poo. Yes, it is very funny. My only slight worry is the association of getting poo on clothes, which, which I agree is funny. Is that association appropriate for a business such as dry cleaning, which is, after all, supposed to be about getting clothes clean? Oh, yeah. But, but I don't think it's really a problem. Yeah, you can worry too much about these things. And the way I see it, there's an upside. Because the message we'll be sending out is, even if you have got poo on your clothes, we can handle it. <laughs> In fact, we could call it touching cloth question mark. <laughs> touching cloth? Then step this way. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Mr. Winkleman, tell us about this rather splendid vase that we're both looking at. The vibration. The vibration. I can't stand it. It's all right, Mr. Winkleman. It's quite normal. It's just the thermonuclear radion machine that we use to generate the television. It's quite safe. <laughs> Although, a rather amusing side effect is that all of our real hair fell out in the first 48 hours. <laughs> so, you were saying, the vase. Um, yes. Uh, well, it's a family heirloom which I think dates from 1760s. Well, that's fascinating. And I'd just like to point out to viewers that it's only through the new magic of television that they can actually see us looking at this vase and describing it to them. <laughs> Have you got hot balls, too? Oh, and that's a bad miss. <laughs> well, that was a cruel miscue. And as the cue ball careers into the black, Jimmy must be wishing that his bank balance would do something similar. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> this, is a, this is a tough game. J Jimmy knows that, but... What, what on earth possessed him to think that horse racing was going to be any easier. <laughs> he called it an investment, but in reality, he was just hanging around Labrooks when he should have been practising his long pots. <laughs> and the results are there for all to see on his careworn face with its bad wig that no longer matches his remaining hair. <laughs> You know my brother-in-law's friend, Gordon? Oh, what? The, the one with the cleft palate and the wonky ear? No, 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 not him. No, the Gordon who sends out those awful Christmas newsletters. I got my reply ready this year, yeah? Dear Gordon, thank you for your very comprehensive Christmas newsletter telling me about what you and all the family have been up to over the last... Is it only a year? And yet so many GCSE results and wisdom teeth out. Quite a roller coaster. As this served to replace a conversation we might have had, here is my response. Good. 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 Oh, by the way, good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me? Not much. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. You really are a bastard, aren't you? <laughs> well, I mean, what's he going to reply to that? I haven't really thought that far ahead. Dear Robert, I'm sorry to have annoyed you with news of my family. I suppose these newsletters are a little impersonal, but I know that a lot of my friends are interested to hear how we're getting on, and I must admit that around Christmas, I don't really have time to write to everyone individually. I'm sorry to have cut a corner so abhorrent to you, and needless to say, I won't be wasting your time again in future. P.S. <laughs> little Jane says she loves you. <laughs> sorry, Gordon. Forgive me, Gordon. I'm not Gordon. Where's Gordon? 